Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. George Murphy in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a story about fear and a man's decision. Find yourself or die. The story is called The Death of Me. Our star, Mr. George Murphy. Evening, Harlow. Well, Oscar Otto, the loquacious limousine, and in top form. Sure, Harlow, and it's because I'm equipped with an Autolite electrical system. Ah, then you must have an Autolite starting motor, generator, battery, coil distributor, and a set of Autolite spark plugs. Plus all the other important parts that go to make up the complete Autolite electrical system used as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. Oh, you bet I do, Harlow. That means every unit and component part of your Autolite electrical system is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give the smoothest performance money can buy. That's why my owner always insists on... Autolite Original Factory Parts. And friends, you'll find it pays to insist on Autolite Original Factory Parts for your Autolite-equipped car. Because from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. George Murphy is appearing by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture, Scaramouche, starring Stuart Granger, Eleanor Parker, Janet Lee, and Mel Ferrer. And now, Autolite presents... The Death of Me, starring Mr. George Murphy, hoping once again to keep you in... Suspense! I should have told Sal when it began. Even after we were married, all I'd said about what happened to me in the war was that I'd been wounded. I guess I put it that way because, well, maybe I was ashamed. Battle fatigue, the docs called it. Like a nervous breakdown. At the bottom of it was fear. I'd learned that, but not ordinary fear. It was like some powerful, misty thing. Well, they called it imaginary fear. That's why I wanted the job away from everything. Fresh air, exercise. I had to get a grip on it before it got worse. The place was upstate, way back upstate, and it took most of the day to drive there. But even then, when I could still realize what was happening to me, I I just couldn't tell Sal. Why, Harry? I still don't get it. Why'd you have to quit your job? I bet you really got fired. No, I'm not fired, Sal. Like I told you, it's a leave of absence. It's crazy. Going off to this jerkwater town in the hills to work in a two-bit lumber camp. Was dull enough right where we were. Well, it won't be for long, honey. I know it. Just, Just long enough for me to... The change will be good for both of us. We must have passed the place or you made a wrong turn or something. The map says only one road. Can't be much farther. What's the name of this dump, anyway? McCabe. Bixby and Louse is the name of the outfit. Well, I bet they don't even wear shoes this far back in the hills. Hillbillies. But there it is. Uh, up ahead, see? Yeah. I'm thrilled. <laughs> The town was old, maybe 200 people in a place that once held 2,000. I couldn't blame Sal for not wanting to come. She was pretty, the kind of a woman that men looked at. She liked excitement. There hadn't been very much in our life, and, well, it, it made me feel better knowing that I wouldn't be alone. Bixby and Lausch was a worn-looking building on the main street. Sam Bixby was a big man with cold, hard little eyes. Yeah, they told me you was coming. Name's Harry Sawyer, huh? Kind of puny for a logger, ain't you, Harry? Oh, I can pull my weight, Mr. Bixby. I've done it before. Maybe. This ain't one of them big, fancy logging outfits. We're small and we work hard. Well, I expect to. That's your wife out there in the car? Yeah. You can't take her out to the camp. She'll have to stay here in town. Except on Saturday nights. Yeah, I understand. Well, I guess you'll do. Job's only good for a month. Uh, then I'm hired? Yeah, you're hired. Come on, I'll buy you and your wife a drink. Well, thanks, Mr. Bixby, but uh, we're not settled. All right, right another now. time. I'll see you in the morning. The truck leaves at 6. I'll be ready. And, and thanks. Well? I'm hired. It's, uh, it's out of town. You, you'll have to stay here. For how long? Oh, a month. A month in this dump? Well, that's really something to look forward to. 
Well, what do we do? Sleep in the car? I'm hungry. Well, there, there's a sign down the street. Rooms. Rooms. Bet there isn't even a private bath in the whole town. It wasn't too bad. At least the room was clean. Sal took a long time getting her hair just so and the lipstick just right like she always did before we went to eat. The guy downstairs said the best place was Myra's, a bar up the street. Everybody ate there. More coffee? No, just the check. No check. Anything else? What do you mean, no check? It's been paid, even the tip. Well, give it back, sweetheart. I, I don't go for stuff Oh, like don't that. be silly, Harry. If someone wants to pay the check, let him. Doesn't mean anything. Sure, mister. He don't mean anything. It was a good tip. Who is this he, miss? That's him coming this way. Big Sam Bixby. Well, I hope you folks don't mind me butting in. Yeah, this your wife? Well, it ain't often we have a looker like you in the cave, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks for the dinner, Mr. Bixby. We appreciate it. <laughs> don't mention it. I'll see you in the morning, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Good night. I knew I shouldn't have let it get me, but, but it was the way he looked at Sal. Not at me once. It was ridiculous to think anything. He was just being friendly. But even back in the room, it still bothered me. The way he looked at Sal. What's the matter with you, Harry? You look funny. Huh? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Everything's fine. You ready to go to sleep? As soon as I finish my hair. So that, uh, Bixby's a boss, huh? Yeah. A nice guy. Don't you like him? I don't know yet. Harry, do you think my hair looks better up or down? Oh, you look good with it either way. I just wondered. Okay, you can turn off the light. Sal, everything's going to be all right, isn't it? I mean, the town... Sure. I guess it won't be so bad. I love you, Sal. You know that, don't you? Let's get some sleep. you got to get up early. You Sawyer? Yes. McCaw's my name. Ludy McCaw. Hello. <laughs> we uh, riding out to the camp together? I don't rightly know. Uh, Myra wants to see you. Myra? Myra Lausch. The other half of Bixby and Lausch. Was there something wrong? I don't rightly know. In the office there. She'll tell you. Miss Lausch? Shut the door. You wanted to see me? That's right. I wanted to see you. You're fired, saw you. Fired? Why? You're fired. That's all there is to it. Now get out. Get clear out of town. But I thought Mr. Bixby I said... I don't care what Mr. Bixby said. You get out of my cave before you... What in the name's going on in here? Myra, honey, I swear I can hear you clear to Coltville. Well, I don't like it, that's all, Sam. You're hiring every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes down the pike. I just don't like it. Honey, you may be a partner in this company, but I run it. I hired Sawyer. When the time comes, I'll say when he goes. Well, all right. But there's going to be trouble, Sam. You know it, I know it. There's going to be trouble. Get in the truck, Sawyer. We're wasting time. It's kind of cold riding a truck to bed this morning. <laughs> Think Sam would have let us ride in the cab with him. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see you still got your scalp. Myra can really boil over, can't she? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the camp. If there's anything else you want to know, just ask me. <laughs> they say I'm the biggest busybody in these parts. All right, boys. Find a bunk, saw you. Then you and Ludie meet me at the office. And snap it up. There's an empty bunk next to me, okay? Sure. Say, uh, what, what's that smell in the air? Swamp? Huh? Oh, yeah. Down over yonder. Good timber growing there, too. Don't know what Sam's saving it for. I was worried at first I might be put off somewhere alone. But Sam teamed me up with Ludie. After that, there wasn't time to think about anything but work. It was just what I needed, and Ludie made good company. That night, it was a dreamless sleep. The first I'd had... 
By the third day, I was used to everything except that heavy, decay-filled smell of swamp. Then on the fourth day... That's the only part I like, watching them fall. <laughs> Dude, you're getting pretty good. Thanks. Yeah, he's doing all right. Huh? Oh, Sam. Didn't know you was back out from town. Looks like he got saw your broken right. Oh, it ain't me, Sam. He's a good worker. Looks like he'd be good on Cyprus. Come on, Sawyer. I got a special job for you. Me too, Sam? Just Sawyer. He can do this alone. Special job, Mr. Bixby? Yeah. That act sharp? Sure. What is it? You'll see. You said cypress? Doesn't cypress grow in the swamp? Yeah. Wet cypress. Watch your foot now. Yeah. There's your job. Through the mist. Six cypress. Well, uh, that's a big job, Mr. Bixby. And, and footing like this, wouldn't it be better... Can't spare anybody. You'll do it alone. Yes, but... I told you we work hard around here. Just watch your footing. Don't slip at the wrong time. I was alone. Maybe another day, working with someone. And being there alone wouldn't have seemed so... What could I say? That it was a sickness, this thing, this fear... That I didn't want to be alone, not yet, because I was sick? Would he have understood? W would Sal, would anyone have understood what it was like? It was all around me, this thing in the mist. I had to fight it. I couldn't let it win. I had to fight it for Sal. That's why I'd come here. To work. Work for Sal. Work for Sal. Hey! Huh? Oh, Ludie! You're working like a crazy man. It's after quitting time. Almost too dark to see. Well, I, I gotta finish this one. Oh, go on, rest yourself. Go get some water. I'll finish it. Well, I guess I I guess I could use a drink. I was tired, aching tired. But I had stayed there. That was all that mattered. For the first time, I began to feel good, really good. There was water near the bunkhouse, and I went there and drank and started back. It was going to be easy now. I was on my way up. I was almost there when I stopped. I guess it was seeing Ludy there at the tree, just like I had been. There was something about it, like I was watching myself. Then I realized there was something... Someone else there in the darkness behind him. Then he came out of the gloom, holding an axe. It was Big Sam. I froze. I couldn't move. I knew what was going to happen. I couldn't move. The axe came flashing down. I watched myself die. Autolite is bringing you Mr. George Murphy in The Death of Me, tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Arlo, I travel in pretty good company with my Autolite electrical system, don't I? Uh, you sure do, Oscar, because Autolite electrical systems are used as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. Well, that's because leading automotive engineers know that the Autolite electrical system and works as a team to give the smoothest performance money can buy. It sure does, Oscar. That Autolite electrical system goes to work the second you turn the ignition key and keeps right on working every second your engine runs, as well as when you blow the horn, turn on your lights, electric windshield wiper, radio, or heater. And friends, take a tip from me. Treat your car to a periodic checkup at your car dealer's or your authorized Autolite service station. You can quickly locate the authorized Autolite service station nearest you in the classified section of the phone book under Automobile Electrical Service. 
Here you will find men trained under Autolite supervision who specialize in the electrical system of your car. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. George Murphy in Elliot Lewis's production of The Death of Me, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. It looked like an accident. Ludie's body lay face down in the slime under the fallen tree. But I couldn't get it out of my mind. The feeling that I should have been lying there with Sam and the sheriff looking down at me. Just don't look right, Sam. Just don't look right. The tree fell on him, Floyd, ain't it plain? Uh, that wound in the back of the head, how'd that happen? Yeah, that heavy branch right there must have done it. Well, maybe you couldn't see any footprints if there was any in this swamp. Must... You think somebody done it on purpose? That's just plain stupid, Floyd. Who'd want to kill Ludie? I don't know, but it uh, just don't seem likely he'd be dumb enough to stand there and let a tree fall on him. Well, maybe he slipped. Maybe, but we got to have an inquest. <laughs> He had guts to stand there over Ludie's body. But why? Why kill Ludie? Then he looked at me. Just a glance, but I saw it. As if he knew I had seen him kill. Okay, fine. When I got to town, I'd go straight to the room. Then at the inquest, I'd hang him. Just a minute. These darn snaps on this dress. Wasn't expecting you so soon. I... Harry. What's the matter? Why, nothing. I sent out for coffee, and I thought... What? What did you think? I don't know. What are you doing in town? You didn't get fired. I'm here for the inquest. Inquest? Oh, so that's what all the buzzing's about. I thought it was some kind of accident. It wasn't an accident. It was murder. I saw it, Sal. I saw Sam Bixby kill a man. You saw Sam Bixby kill... Oh, it looks like an accident. It looks real good like an accident. But it isn't. Why, that... That's awful. Is it, Sal? Of course it is. What's got into you, anyway? Well, for a minute I thought that... It, it's just that I saw it happen, and I... I don't know. You're just upset, that's all. Now, what about that inquest? They said at the bar as soon as the coroner gets here. Are you gonna go? Yeah, I, I guess we'd better. Kindly close the bar till we're through. Back off, boys. That's all. All right. Now, this here's Mr. John Cahill, the county coroner. He's going to run this thing. Cut that now. This is serious. Saw you. I told now, the other boys not to waste any time up there. I ain't had a chance to talk with you. You were supposed to be working that Cypress alone. Yes. Just tell them where you was at the time. We'll talk about that later. Well, all right. I think there's a couple of seats down front. Well, this is fine right here. I watched him slip back into the crowd. It was like some bad dream. I had been so sure, but, but now I wasn't sure of anything. M maybe I hadn't seen it at all. But I had. Ludie was dead. I had to tell. Sawyer? Harry Sawyer? Harry, that's you. You'll do the right thing? Yes, Al, I, I'll do the right thing. <clears throat> Name? Harry Sawyer. Now, oh, Mr. Sawyer, if you've been watching the proceedings, you know what we're trying to get at. We've got to try to determine the facts as best we can. I looked up and saw Bixby. Our eyes met and locked. All I remember was the mist. It was everywhere. I was back in the mist, and I, I couldn't tell. I was making a terrible, terrible mistake, but I couldn't say anything but yes and no, and it was over. The 
verdict is that the deceased one Ludie McCaw met his death through accidental causes. You were right, honey. You did right. Sal, we've got to leave. We've got to get out of here. Oh, yeah? How about you and your wife having a drink with me? I owe you one, remember? Why, yeah, Mr. Bixby. Of course. That'll be nice. Yeah, this booth here? Sal, listen. We've got to, Harry. Yeah, this is fine. Ah, good. And after we have our drinks, what say we ride out to the camp? This is Saturday, you know. We have a big time at the camp on Saturday. Well, I don't think Sal would... Why, sure she would. You want your wife to see where you work, don't you? Sure, honey. Ought to be fun. Yeah, there's whiskey and gambling. Myra runs the table, but you can never tell. You might win something. We'll have a fine time. He knew I had seen him kill, and he was cold. Cold as ice. Sal didn't realize. She didn't understand that I'd made a terrible, terrible mistake. We couldn't go back there. It was just what he wanted. We shouldn't have come, Sal. You, you don't understand. We've got to leave. Listen, Harry, everything's all right now. We'll go over at the dice game. Play a few bucks. Act natural. Four is the point, little Joe. All right, bet a dollar. The pass line? Doesn't matter. Anything. Oh, here you are. I brought you some drinks. I almost spilled them. Why, thanks. So I saw you. You ain't showed your wife around yet. Harry wanted to shoot some dice. Well, suppose I show you around, if Harry don't mind. Why, yeah. You don't mind, do you, honey? Well, no. No, I don't mind. Fine. We got a mighty interesting place here. Oh, Sal. Sal, wait. Seven. Next shooter. Sawyer, it's your dice. I wanted to run, run after Sal, run away from everything, but I, I had to act natural. Natural, seven, the shooter wins. And that was the beginning. I threw seven after seven. I couldn't lose. I'd never been lucky before, but now I couldn't lose. Eleven, natural. <laughs> Don't you think you just about run the luck out of those dice, Sawyer? Your luck's bound to change. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know I'm right. I picked up the money, but I, I couldn't leave without Sal. She didn't realize. And then it hit me. It wasn't luck. That's why he'd taken her away. That's why the dice had kept me. He wanted me to come looking. Out there. I want to talk. There's nothing more to talk about. How did you get so mixed up? It was dark. I thought it was... But him. I didn't tell you to kill anybody. It was your idea. You're in this too. Don't be crazy. All I said was if something just happened to Harry, naturally I'd have to stay longer. You can't leave me. It's all over, Sam. He's not saying anything and we're leaving. Get it through your head. <laughs> Wait. There's someone. <laughs> it's me, Sal. It's only me. I'm here. <laughs> Isn't that what you wanted? What? What are you going to do? No. He ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to kill him. And tell him to. You're drunk, Sam. You don't know what you're doing. Sam! Stop it, Sam. Here, let go of him. I'll shoot. Myra. Listen to me, Sam. It's not worth it. She isn't worth it. You're awful nosy, Myra. Too nosy. Now, I want that gun. Don't stay there, Sam. Don't... Don't make me shoot. You wouldn't shoot. We're partners. You wouldn't shoot me. <laughs> we're partners. You wouldn't... Sam. Oh, Sam. Where? <laughs> He's dead, Myra. I'll take the gun. Dead. Oh, no. No. I have to hold you. I'm sorry. Me? I loved him. It was her. How about getting your wife out of here, Sawyer? Leave McKay. Don't come back.
Harry? Harry, don't just sit there. Say something. I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. Harry. Keep away, Sal. What's the matter? You afraid of me? No. No, I'm all over being afraid. I was just setting Bixby up, that's all. We could have made him pay a fortune to keep him quiet. Don't you see, I was only doing it for you. What are we stopping for? This is where you get out. Get out? You're gonna leave me here? What'll I do? It. There's nothing. Where'll I go? The roads are many. The world is wide. Get out. Harry, you can't leave me here. I'm your wife. Take me with you. You've got to. It's a matter of self-preservation, honey. Sooner or later, you'd be the death of me. Harry, don't leave me. Harry! Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. George Murphy. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite and bringing back our star, George Murphy. Good show, George. Thank you very much, Harlow. You know, I consider it a special privilege to have appeared on Suspense tonight. I enjoyed playing Harry Sawyer very much, and all of my fellow players were wonderful, and it's always a pleasure to work for Autolite. But more than that, I have the opportunity to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, of an unusual treat Autolite has planned for you next week when Jack Benny stars on suspense in an exciting story called A Good and Faithful Servant. I guarantee you'll love him. And Harlow, believe me, I'll be listening. Thanks, George Murphy. And friends, remember, suspense is presented for your entertainment by the Autolite family, the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers, the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast, and the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, the story of a unique retirement plan and the man who spent 30 years working it out. The story is called A Good and Faithful Servant. And we are privileged to have as our star, Mr. Jack Benny. The story will be heard on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Death of Me was written for Suspense by Richard Chandley. In tonight's cast, Charlotte Lawrence was heard as Sal and William Conrad as Sam. Featured in the cast were Irene Tedrow, Herb Butterfield, and Joseph Kearns. And remember next week on Suspense, Mr. Jack Benny in... A good and faithful servant. You can buy Autolite electrical parts, Autolite stay full batteries, Autolite standard or resistor type spark plugs at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.